What is going on guys, it's Modded Dwarf here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So the 9.00 jailbreak came out for the PS4 earlier today, and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a full guide, a full tutorial on how to set up this jailbreak for your PS4, how to get updated to the correct firmware version 9.00, and how to fully install this jailbreak safely so that uh, you know, you're not going to accidentally install any future updates or anything and lose the jailbreak. So this will be a full noob friendly tutorial for you guys. Now, this video is kind of part of a series of tutorials I've already made on my channel showing you how to make the most out of your jailbroken PS4. So I've done videos on installing, uh, you know, games, DLC and updates, useful homebrew apps, emulators, PS1 and PS2 games, uh, obviously Linux as well so that you can run PC games on your PS4. I've covered all of that and more on the channel already in this jailbreak tutorial series so if you're wondering what to do next once you finish this video and you've successfully jailbroken your ps4 check out that series there'll be a link down in the video description let's go ahead and dive right into this shall we so first thing we're going to do here is obviously head on to your settings menu now this applies for people who are on previous jailbreaks who want to update to the latest jailbreak 9.00 and people who have not had a jailbreak before who are maybe on you know, 8.03, 8.50, 9.00, and are wanting to try this jailbreak. So the first thing we need to do is head down to a uh, system and go down to automatic downloads. Make sure you uncheck all the boxes in here. You do not want any of these things ticked right here. You want all of that to be disabled. The second thing we're going to do is go into the network settings and uncheck the box to connect to the internet so that we are not going to download the latest firmware because the latest firmware right now is 9.03 and if you accidentally update to that then unfortunately you're not going to be able to do this jailbreak. So then we're going to head down to system and go to system information and as you can see I'm currently on firmware version 7.55. So you need to be on firmware version 9.00 for this jailbreak to work. If you've updated past 9.00, so you're on 9.03, I hate to say it, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to do this jailbreak. Um, shouldn't have updated. 9.03 only came out like a week and a half ago. So yeah, I don't, I don't know why you updated, I'm sorry. But however, if you're on 9.00 already, then that's great. You can skip the next section of the video where I'm going to show you how to update to 9.00. But if you're already on 9.00, then just go to the timestamp you see on screen to skip this section of the video. However, if you are on a lower firmware than 9.00, like in this case, I'm on 7.55, stay with me here so I can show you how to update to the correct firmware version 9.00. You have to be on that firmware version to do this jailbreak. So let's get into it. Okay, so in order to update to 9.00, you are going to need to have a USB drive. Uh, it doesn't have to be a large USB drive, it can be a small USB drive. So just make sure you have yourself a USB drive and obviously a computer as well of some kind. So plug your USB drive into your computer. Okay, and once you're on your computer, we're going to need to download the 9.00 firmware update. And we can get that from this right here. So darksoftware.xyz forward slash PS4 slash firmware list. All links will be down in the video description. All you need to do is go to this website and scroll down until you find 9.00 and download it. You do need to be logged into the website for the download button to appear. So just register and make yourself an account. Uh, this is probably one of the fastest servers to get the download as quick as possible. You can also go to this website here as well to get it. If you go to PS4 firmwares, this does not require you to make an account, but the servers are slower, so it takes longer to download but uh, you can find the 9.00 download right here. Just click the download button and download it to your computer. As you can see, I've got it downloaded right here. Now check the file name. Make sure the file name is ps4update.pup. This one was downloaded from Dark Software and it's renamed to ps4update900.pup. So I need to rename it so it's just called ps4update.pup. That's what you want. And then we're going to go to our USB drive. So here's my USB drive right here. Now we want that USB drive to be formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format, preferably XFAT. So right click and go to properties. Just ensure that that says XFAT right there. And if it doesn't, you can obviously right click and reformat it to the XFAT file system, clicking start to reformat it. 
Obviously, that will erase the data on the drive if you reformat it. So make sure you have anything on the USB drive backed up beforehand. But uh, once it's in XFAT or FAT32, you can then go into this USB drive and create a folder in the root of the drive, not inside any other folders, called PS4 in uppercase characters. Then go into that folder, create another folder called update, also in uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, you're going to copy your update file that you downloaded into that folder. So you've got this file structure, your USB drive might be called removable disk I or something, uh, whatever it's called, and then PS4, then the update folder, and then the update file inside that folder. Okay, once you have the update on your USB drive, you can go ahead and eject the drive and plug it into your PS4. Okay, and now that we're back on the PS4, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go back to the settings menu and go to system software update. Now remember, you must have the internet unchecked. You must not be connected to the internet. Also, I would recommend checking your notifications and just make sure there's not a system update already downloaded in your notifications like 9.03 or anything. If there is, then just, you know, delete all your notifications. Um, you know, delete the, the update file if there's any in your downloads, in your notifications because you don't want to accidentally install the latest uh, update. So when we go to system software update now, it should only detect the one that's on the USB drive. Since you've cleared your notifications and you're not connected to the internet, it should not find the latest software from PSN. So you should just get the one that's on your USB, which should be 9.00 if you downloaded the correct version. So now that this one is on 9.00, we can go next. This can happen, just click OK and then go back to system software update again. Click next a second time and it should work. Uh, that error I think has something to do with the, the update blocker for older jailbreaks. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and click accept and update and that will update us to our 9.00 firmware so that we can do the jailbreak. Okay, so we're back after the update. As you can see right here in the notifications, system software version 9.00 was installed. We can head to our settings, go down to system, system information. And as you can see, we're now updated to the correct firmware version for the jailbreak. So now all we have to do is get the jailbreak set up. So in order to do that, uh, there's a couple of different things we're going to do. First of all, actually, we're going to go into the settings, go into their network settings. We're going to set up an internet connection. So I guess we have to reconnect to the internet, set up an internet connection, use whatever method you normally use, Wi-Fi or LAN cable. We're going to go to a custom setup. And we're going to go to uh, automatic IP, do not specify DHCP. We're going to do a manual DNS setup. And we're going to set the primary DNS to 192.241.221.79. And then the secondary DNS, we're going to do 165.227.83.145. Okay. So what that's going to do is block all connections to Sony servers so that we don't accidentally download any future firmware updates from Sony. Uh, plus, it will redirect the user guide to an exploit host that we can use. And uh, yeah, it just allows us to kind of use the internet on our PS4 without worrying about downloading system updates from Sony. So we're going to click next. We're going to go to automatic, do not specify proxy, and our settings have been updated. So we're now safely connected to the internet on our jailbroken PS4. So from here, because this exploit is different, this is where things change from previous exploits, where this exploit takes advantage of a file system bug to actually jailbreak the PS4, which means we need to have a USB drive uh, with a image on it that it allows us to jailbreak our PS4, basically. So we need to have a, another USB drive set up here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll unplug our USB drive with our system update on there and we'll use that USB as our USB to run the exploit with. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that USB drive back into our computer now. Okay, so as you can see, USB drive has been plugged in. So what we're gonna do is run some kind of drive mounting software. You can use like, uh, what was it, Win32 Disk Imager or something, Rufus, Etcher, one of those programs. Uh, I'm just gonna use Rufus here. So we're gonna run this. I have to select the option to list USB hard drives in order for it to show up. And I'm going to select my USB drive right here. And then we're going to need to get this xfat hacks.image file. 
and we need to mount that to our USB drive. Again, all the download links will be in the video description. So what we're going to do is select that uh, file, hexfacthacks.image. We're going to open that up. And now all we're going to have to do is click start. And this will only take a few seconds. because It's not a big image file, as you can see right there. Ready, it's done. Once it's done, your drive should not be accessible anymore. So if we refresh, you can see it's not here. Uh, if you assign a drive letter to it, it just shouldn't be accessible. So it should have mounted correctly. So all we have to do now is eject the drive and plug it back into our PS4. Okay, so now you've got the USB drive prepared. The next thing we're going to do is we can either load the jailbreak from the user guide page here in the settings menu. So if we open this up, this should redirect us to an exploit page because of the DNS addresses we put in to the network settings earlier on. So this just caches the theme. And then as you can see, we've got PS4900. If I select that option, eventually there will be payloads in here like Gold Hen, which is your main jailbreak. And you would just select that option to jailbreak the PS4. However, another option is to go through the internet browser. And from here, you have the choice of picking whichever exploit host you want to use. There's quite a lot available. I'll have a few of the popular ones linked in the video description. So you can just pick whichever one you want. For example, one of the popular ones is called nightkinghost.com. If we go there, this takes us to an exploit page and we would just run this 9.00 plus gold hen payload down here to jailbreak the PS4. Another popular one uh, that I've used quite a lot in the past is caro218.ir because it's a nice short URL, doesn't take long to type in. And if we go there, you can see we have 9.00 gold right here. But before you try and load any of these, I would recommend uh, clearing your browser of clutter. So basically delete everything from your browser, delete your browsing history, uh, go to options, go to settings, clear your cookies and clear your website data. You don't need to clear your website data every single time you load the jailbreak. In fact, it's advised not to. But for the first time you're loading a new jailbreak, I would recommend clearing your website data. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to that website. So we'll do caro218.ir. We'll load 9.00 gold. And the first thing this will do is cache the exploit in your browser, which is what it's doing up here. That allows you to load the jailbreak offline in future if you want by loading the cached version. And then it says to turn off the internet and reopen the page. You don't have to turn the internet off. You just have to reopen the page. So if we just go back on Caro218 again, and it should take us back to that page. If not, just go back to Caro218.ir and navigate back to this page. So once you're in here, we can go ahead and run the Gold Hen V2B payload which is our main jailbreak. So make sure you do not have the USB drive plugged into the PS4 when you're about to do this because the exploit itself tells you when you need to plug the USB drive in. So you don't want to already have the drive plugged in. That's going to screw things up. So all we're going to do is run this with the USB drive unplugged and you'll get this loading gold hen message. Obviously, if you're using a different exploit host, It'll maybe be a different message or it'll be a little loading bar or spinning circle or something where you just have to wait until you get a message telling you to plug the USB drive in like we just got right here. So we're going to plug the USB drive in now and then we're just going to wait a few seconds for the drive to be detected. You might get a notification popping up saying unsupported format. There we go. And then we're just going to click OK. And there we go. It's loaded. Gold Hen version 2.0 loaded, coded by Sistro. You have now successfully jailbroken your PS4. Congratulations. Now, if you're running into lots of error messages or the console crashes, that's fine. Just reboot the PS4 and try again. No jailbreak is perfectly stable, even this one. So how can you tell that it's jailbroken? Well, just go into the settings menu. You can see we now have an option here at the top called Gold Hen. And if we go in there, we've got an FTP server we can enable, which can allow us to connect to our PS4 via FTP over our network. We've also got the bin loader server, which we can enable, which will allow us to inject other payloads that we can use on the PS4 as well. And we're not done with the video just yet because there's a couple of other things that we can do. One of which is to load the disable updates payload, which is another layer of protection to stop you from accidentally updating to the latest firmware in future, especially if you by accident remove the DNS settings 
that block Sony servers. Uh, we want to avoid downloading the latest system update as much as possible. So this is a good recommended step. So if we go into the internet browser and we go back to our host, so again, I'll just do caro218.ir again, go to 9.00 gold, and then we're going to go ahead and run the disable updates payload. Now you need to have the bin loader enabled, like that option that we just enabled in the gold hen settings, bin loader server. You need to have that enabled in order for this to work, but we're going to select it. And there we go, payload loaded and disabled updates. So there we go, we've successfully disabled the updates. It's as simple as that. So there's lots of other payloads that you can run in here, by the way. If we go in here, you can see, for example, there's like a game dumper in here and, you know, a bunch of other stuff that I've already covered in my other episodes in the PS4 jailbreak tutorial series. So you can basically install any app that you want as well onto your PS4. Now, there's two different types of apps for the PS4. There's uh, retail apps, retail packages, and fake packages. Now, all of your games, DLC updates, all of these homebrew apps here, all of these PS1 and PS2 games, PS4 games, media apps, all of the apps on the PS4 come in package files, these kind of container files, .pkg files. And there's two different types. There's retail package files and fake package files. Now, retail package files are as they come from Sony. They're encrypted packages. You cannot run them on a jailbroken PS4 unless you have the appropriate license file for that app. Whereas fake package files are decrypted package files. So somebody has taken the retail app, dumped it on their jailbroken PS4, and then turned it into a fake package version of that app, which can run on a jailbroken PS4. So it's basically like an unlocked version of that app, whether it's a, a media app, a homebrew app, a game, a DLC, whatever it is, it can run on a jailbroken PS4 because it's unlocked, it's decrypted. So those are the kinds of apps that you can install on your PS4. So just to give you a quick example of how this works, well, now that we have a jailbroken PS4, we now have backdoor access to install these apps onto our PS4. By going into the settings menu, you can either go into Gold Hen Package Installer, or you can go down to the debug settings, which is also another option that's enabled when you jailbreak your PS4. And you can go in here, go to Game Package Installer, and now you can install third-party apps via a USB drive. So just to quickly show you how that works, if we switch on over to our computer again, I have Minecraft, which is a fake package version of Minecraft. So I've got this copy of Minecraft here because it's a nice small game that I can uh, go ahead and copy to my USB drive and it shouldn't take too long. So I've got a USB drive here, again, formatted in XFAT or FAT32. You just put your fake package apps on the root of the USB drive, not inside any folders. So just put it in the root of the drive. And once you copy the app onto your USB drive in the root of the drive, we can plug that USB drive into our PS4 and install it. So the way that we install this, as you can see, no package is found. I plugged my USB drive back into my PS4. Now, if I go back into the package installer, you can see that the file shows up. I can select it and that installs it onto my PS4. This is a pretty slow USB drive that I'm using here, USB 2.0. So it takes a little while, but uh, yeah, it should install there, no problem. And as you can see, the game now appears on my PS4 and I can run it with the jailbreak, no problem, because it is a decrypted version of the game. So there you go, that runs absolutely fine, as you can see, no problem. And that goes for any kind of app for the PS4. So yeah, that is basically that. Now, last but not least, it is important to mention that this jailbreak is a tethered exploit. Now, what that means is that you have to run the jailbreak every single time you restart the PS4. So let's do an example here. I'll go ahead and restart my PS4. And what will happen is anything I've installed, any decrypted apps that I've installed onto my PS4 will still be there when I restart the PS4, even though the PS4 will no longer be jailbroken. I just won't be able to run those apps until I run the jailbreak again. Okay, so I have rebooted my PS4 now, and after the reboot, you can see that any of these fake package games that I have installed, and these fake package apps, PS1, PS2 games, homebrew apps, I can't run any of them now that I've rebooted my PS4, because the PS4 is no longer jailbroken. 
So in order to actually continue using these apps, I have to run the jailbreak again every single time I restart my PS4. Now there is kind of a way of avoiding this slightly uh, that I'll show you guys in just a second. So of course, all I have to do is go back into the internet browser again, go back on the exploit host that I was using before. So we go back to 9.00, gold hen, run the jailbreak a second time. There we go, device system is unsupported, click OK. And there we go, it loads the jailbreak. And now that the jailbreak has successfully loaded, I should now be able to load said apps that I wasn't able to run before, as you can see, it's running now. So yeah, that is basically the case with this jailbreak. It is one of those jailbreaks where you have to run it every time you reboot the PS4. So there is one thing you can do to try and mitigate this, which is to put the PS4 into rest mode and then when you recover from rest mode, if you set the rest mode settings up correctly, then it will still be running. The jailbreak will still be running and therefore you can continue doing whatever you're doing on your jailbroken PS4 without having to run the jailbreak again. So you can do that instead of turning the PS4 off. So to configure that, if we go into the settings menu, we scroll down to the power saving settings and we go down to set features available in rest mode, you just wanna make sure that the keep application suspended option is enabled. And then from here, we can go into rest mode and hopefully it should work. So we'll go ahead and enter rest mode and see if we can recover from rest mode and the jailbreak still to be running. Okay, I've got the orange light now showing up on my PS4. So it is in rest mode and everything is powered down. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it back on now. Yep, there we go, it's recovered. And as you can see, I can still run my homebrew applications, no problem. And all of my fake package files still work absolutely fine. So yeah, that is it. That is the full tutorial on how to jailbreak your PS4. You can use rest mode now to try and keep the jailbreak running. Or, you know, if you have to restart, you have to restart. It doesn't take too long to re-enable the jailbreak anyway. Uh, only a few seconds, so it's really not that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, that's how you fully jailbreak the PS4 on 9.00 or lower. And of course, if you want to continue with this, which I sure hope you do, and actually learn how to install these homebrew apps and learn why they're useful and how to use them, as if you want to learn how to get PS1 and PS2 games running on your jailbroken PS4, if you want to learn how to get uh, PS4 games, DLC and updates installed, media apps installed, if you want to know how to run Linux on your PS4 and run PC games on your PS4 and more emulators and RetroArch and all of that kind of stuff and cheats and mod menus and, um, you know, PC mods on the PS4 versions of games. I cover all of that stuff in my PS4 jailbreak tutorial series, uh, which already has a ton of episodes already available and you can check out down in the video description. I would recommend starting with either episode three or episode two and just kind of working your way along the videos from there. I'll be updating the links in the descriptions of those videos to support this new jailbreak for any, any, you know, any links that need to be updated to support the 9.00 jailbreak. So uh, that series should be up to date by the time you start watching it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.